Schaefer. And Dan Stevens. Hello again. Hello. Hi. Um, I, I love this movie so fucking much, and I have a head full of questions right now that I can't even make sense of. And I had this whole elaborate plan of what I was gonna ask, and then I was watching from the back of the theater, and the last like 30 minutes, like Hunter, you were so fucking good in this movie. It's great. Thank you. And, and so before getting into talking about how weird and delightfully weird this movie is, uh, as a first feature role, like what drew you to this and what were your, your conversations like? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, um, you know, this movie came at, I, I don't know, kind of just the perfect time. It was after uh, season one of Euphoria, and, um, and I was uh, looking for a movie, and uh, the script came along, and I started trying to read it, and I was like, whoa, okay, I need more context. And um, and then I watched Tillman's first film, Lose. And, yeah. And um, uh, completely fell in love with um, what he's doing as an artist and as a director and was able to read the rest of the script through that sort of lens. And I was like, I, I, I need to do this, and I, I worked hard in the audition process, and um, I, got yeah, the, I got the role, and uh, um, yeah, that's, that's how it happened. So, Tillman, so where did this idea come from? How long has it been brewing in your brain? I, I think I started conceptualizing when I was in post-production with, uh, uh, with that movie, Loose. Maybe we had we had a we had a thing happening in between 2018 and here. It was some hole <laughs> uh, where nothing happened. Um, I don't know. I always started with a feeling, and for this, I had some like sadness and um, fear, like a mix of that within me while I was hidden, and then stuff that I like or that I find interested sort of brings out that feeling more and more. And for this, it was the documentary about the cuckoo bird breeding and what they do. And I, I knew that. The Germans usually know that because it's sort of our animal. <laughs> I don't know if you know that. But, uh, uh, but you forget. You forget how crazy it is. It puts its eggs in the nest of other bird species and then it lets them raise their offspring. And it's really gruesome because all the host offspring die in that process. And that, but like the cuckoo no, not the cuckoo bird, the host birds keeping on and feeding that chick that grows bigger than they are. And they don't abandon the nest because it makes sense evolutionary that they don't do that. That made me very sad. But there was also a beauty and a hopefulness in it, in this sort of ignorance. Um, and I think that was sort of, I, I was like, all right, that, how do I project that on humans? Like, you know, what do I do with that? And that came on. <laughs> Just that easy. Um, now, Dan, you are also incredible in this. I'm, I'm a big believer in that a, a hero it can only be as good as the villain and vice versa. Uh, and so... How, how did you come to this? What were your initial conversations with Tillman like? I prefer the term antagonist. <laughs> I, I came onto this much, much later, so they were planning to make this for, for two years and many, many things uh, came in the way, global catastrophes and euphorias and various other things. And um, I th it was very, very late, like I think three weeks, is, was it? Something three insane. weeks before you were due to shoot, something happened. That is really, they suddenly needed uh, a new Koenig. And, um, <laughs> And I got on the phone with Tillman, I, I read the script, I'd seen this film Loose, which it sounds like a few of you have seen here. Yeah. I think that movie is a fucking masterpiece. It's like, it was made for 50,000 euros. It's less than 90 minutes long, which is one of the great things about it. But it's also, 
It's also from the mind of a, an incredibly assured filmmaker who's just like brilliant with sound design, just very, very playful with his audience, and with limited resources created a really, really uncanny feeling. I felt like I was watching a, a Cronenberg or a Lynch or something like that. Anyway, reading, reading Cuckoo, with that in mind, this, this particular German character leapt out at me. It was, it was based on, on a sort of a series of Germans that I've known throughout my life. And, and, I, and, uh, and I, I, got on the, I got on the phone with, with Tillman and immediately started speaking German, which he didn't realise that I spoke. And he was really freaked out. So that's a really good uh, lesson for director meetings in future, providing they speak German. I think it, it would really freak them out if they were an English director and I just started speaking German. Um, but we got on the yeah we got on the phone started speaking German told him about this this German character that I had in mind and he went yes yes exactly this this more of this and uh, three weeks later I was in Cologne with this lot and uh, we had a great time we did I mean the location that you guys shot in is amazing is it the kind of thing where you all were sort of trapped at this one place for a couple of weeks like where was it most of it I think maybe a week or so or one and a half that we didn't shoot at this place, but other than that, that was a um, abandoned British army base in the in West Germany, like at the Belgian border. You're welcome. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you for doing it. By the way, I, I heard they left because eventually the Germans made them pay taxes. And then they were like, no, no, we're going. Um, and so they left this a small town, a complete small town with hospitals and schools and churches too. Uh, for, for both of the Christianities, and um, um, and this this in, in, in insane um, ballroom, this general's casino they call it, and I st set foot in that place, and the shining came over me. <laughs> um, we're shooting here, and our production designer was there. I was like, this place is falling apart. There's mold everywhere. I don't even know if it's safe to shoot. I'm like, no, 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 we're shooting here. This is very important. Uh, yeah, it was a great find, and I, I have a lot of questions about uh, how the look of the film, and it seems like others do as well, but before we get to that, the actual, one of the huge impressions that you immediately get every time a character enters a room is you're like, fuck, these people look cool. The yeah. costume design in this movie, right. every single time I'm like, Halloween costume, Halloween costume, Halloween costume. Yeah. But like, it, it, it's, a lot of movies fail to pull off iconic characters, and you guys are just doing it left and right. And so what was that creation, that design process It helps like? when you cast an icon in your lead role. Two. Two. Yeah, I agree. No, everything has to come together. It's from, 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 uh, I mean, the, the costume also, you know, it has to blend into the scenes, and you have to put it on people. You know, um, and they have to be right. I mean, did y'all see his shoes <laughs> in that shot where he's creeping forward on the chair like that? That's yeah. What was it? What, what was the nickname for the shoes? Fairy tale uh, shoes. shoes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Are there any particular favorite outfits or looks that you yes, stole? Yes, Jessica's the sweater, the fluffy one. I want that sweater. Want that sweater? What fluffy sweater? Uh, she has like oh, a long hair. The... Like, she looks like a bird. Oh, actually. yeah. Uh, That's fine. What's yours? The shoes. The shoes. I remember you were going to Milan or something for Paris Fashion Week, and you were like, I cannot wait to be in fucking jeans and a bomber jacket. I'm going to dress up so nicely. Yeah. Like, I get it. Yeah. I get it. Get yeah. out of that dirty tongue tank top. <laughs> What was the, because I, I think it's pretty obvious that you three get along really, really well. So what was the vibe like on set, particularly when you're doing some pretty elaborate and insane uh, things in this film? Field trip? Yeah, I always... Oh, this is mine. Okay. Wait, does this work? Okay. Um, well, I always say filming this movie, and this was my first movie filming experience, um, but filming this movie felt like summer camp um, uh, because we were truly like an hour into the German forest in an abandoned town and it was just the crew, you know, honed in on this weird ass movie and then, um, and uh, yeah, it felt like summer camp, so it was, it, it happened very fast, everybody knew each other's names, and 
Yeah. And eating together and it was know, goofy. It was so oh, curry worst. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, I mean, for Hunter, this is your first feature, but Dan, this is certainly not your first rodeo and not in genre. So what, like, when you came to set, uh, were you offering guidance? Like, what was what was the process like for you? I, I, I can't offer anyone guidance. Um, <laughs> no, I just, I, I, I always think that filmmaking is an exercise in collective madness, really. And it is fun when you trust the madman who came up with it. And we just trusted Tillman. I knew, again, having seen Loose, I just knew that we were, we were in good hands. And there was, you know, of course, making a film is hard. Making an independent film is very, very hard. But, you know, there were, there were definitely challenges along the way. But we all just sort of believed in this madman. <laughs> and uh, I, I just knew that, I knew the sound was going to be weird and cool. And it's such a huge part of this film is the, is the sound design. And I just knew that our, our bit, or certainly my bit, is just a tiny little offering in, in the, the massive sort of cinematic smorgasbord that is uh, Cuckoo. Not so tiny. But what? It's not that tiny. <laughs> it's kind of a big, big deal. But there's, <laughs> so, there's so much that goes in after, you know, the, the, the music and the sound on this is really, really phenomenal. And, and the weird looping editing and stuff, none of that was, none of that was us. <laughs> yeah, well, the, I mean, the music is incredible and the sound design, like you were just saying, is uh, so integral and so distinct. Um, what, did you have that during production to play on set? Was it entirely in post? Yeah, we had um, the we had an early version of the call um, that our composer actually worked on, Simon Vasco, who did the, the original score. Um, he also worked on the calls, and he got the the voice artist for you know that does all the sounds. Um, and he started looping that and playing around with that, and then at some point the sound designers took over. But it was, yeah, it was very important to me that it had a musical quality and it, it was sort of like a intersection of music and um, sound design. And we had a creepy thing going on inside. What was it? It was like a long loop, right? I, well, every time that we didn't need the audio, you know, when, when, whenever it was possible to just kill the microphones, then we would just blast creepy calls inside. <laughs> And, and this has such a uh, the visuals. Um, there's there's certain moments, the bicycle moment. Uh, anytime it cuts to the even just the extreme close up of a throat, uh, like the way that you shoot this movie, and then particularly once you see the side effects and it's doing the like double vision, were those things that you immediately knew you wanted to get while writing the script, or what stage did you design all of that? Um. Yes. Most of it, yes. Most of it w was in the script. The shakiness was an idea by our cinematographer, and we had to um, we had to create more shakes in post. But some of them are real, and they are done with a mirror. And uh, we just shot it through a mirror. And then Paul <laughs> Paul Fowles, the cinematographer, he's kind of a crafty handyman, and he can do all sorts of things. And he just what was it, like two screwdrivers he, he like, like put on the, in the back, like electronical ones, and then they were sort of like shake the mirror like this and like this, because we wanted to have the parallax effect that, you know, not the whole image shakes like an earthquake shot or something, but we wanted to look behind the people. And then, um, though, you know, they also did that in the effects and did an incredible job um, uh, basically rebuilding that, you know. Um, the throat, yeah. the throat was practical though. Oh, the, the throat they was built, a dummy. Yeah, they yeah, built literal. this mad like piece of throat with, yeah. with skin <laughs> over it, with a little like, motor behind it. Go, and they just <laughs> wheeled it onto set one day. This sort of disembodied throat just came on. <laughs> and they did this close-up shot of this thing. But it looks great. But I remember being really freaked out by that. <laughs> yeah, there's something about throats that are it's not chill. <laughs> Uh, and so we only have time for one more question, so I'm just gonna kind of keep it a bit general. In like 10, 15 years from now, because I think this movie's gonna be a classic, uh, what do you hope that you don't forget about the, like, a day of making it? Like, what do you hope is your first memory when you look back on the production of this, like, 20 years from now? That's a good question. What's my favorite memory? What do I have? I hope we're still friends. <laughs> That's a great place to end it on. <laughs>
pull out your phones and scan that QR code so that you can vote in the audience award. You have like 30 minutes to do it, so don't forget. Do it now. Thank you for coming uh, out. And, and Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Support uh, independent weird horror films like this, because otherwise we're never going to get them again. And then also, as you're leaving, you can find a uh, very collectible thing of Hunter's Polaroids. And those are so cool. Got one of these. Yeah, it's a cool zine. Go get it. Yeah, go get it. Hey. All right, I'm, hey, I'm sorry, I have to pee so bad.